Good afternoon. <laughs> Dick style. Take two. Take two. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, I'm shouting. It's probably not going to go very well. Take three. Good afternoon, everyone. This is another episode of todebate.eu, the podcast, the intergalactic podcast of obviously the, the galaxy. The transdimensional podcast. Transdimensional? How would you trans define transdimensional, Doug? Da, 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 transdimensional. Yeah, but how do, how do, what does that mean? Transdimensional. I know 3D and 4D. No, thank you. That doesn't. <laughs> that certainly helps our listeners to have the German version of the word. <laughs> I mean, how but, do you define what, transdimensional? Transdimensional, across, dimension? across dimensions. Yeah, if, uh, like the multiverse, you know, multiple. Uh, would it be trans trans multiversal right. then? It's no? all it's all a game simulation anyway. Yeah, trans simulational. Whatever the amazing podcast, debating podcast, <laughs> the amazing <laughs> podcast where we where we welcome anyone from anywhere to uh, say anyone uh, um, to talk anything. about anything. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, except it's just you and me debating. True. That kind of limits. Maybe maybe we should we should invite a crowd at some point. Like everybody brings a debating team, like a whole crowd that cheers you on. So and it's you, us and like, against them. You know, like these, I like that. Like these rap battles. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Instead of dancing, because dancing really is not my forte, and rapping, which is also not my forte, but uh. Yeah, some crowd that kind of fires us up and uh, shouts in the back and boos when you go on the mic and uh, cheers right. when I I go. have a question for you, though. If that were to happen, if there's a crowd of people, they're bound to have smartphones, right, with them. Is there anyone today who has no smartphone with them? Wait, wait, indeed. It's a rhetorical question. Next step of my reasoning. They're likely to be snapping pictures for their Instagram, aren't they? Ah, oh, I uh, see what you're doing. It took you a while to <laughs> it took you a while to see where I'm going. <laughs> I thought you were you were sharper. Maybe today you're you're too busy. Wow, wow. Is there anything wrong with your knee? I haven't watched Pumping <laughs> Iron yet. I have downloaded it, but I haven't watched it yet. Well, you you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. It's, it's completely your cup of tea. Or I actually maybe not. read about pumping iron again. And for listeners who are lost in what in our digressions, constant digressions, last time in the last debate, we talked about Schwarzenegger and the psychological trick. Uh, and you mentioned the film recommended documentary Pumping Iron. Um, I think one of his best friends died over the weekend. So it was mentioned. I uh, can't remember the name. Uh, it has an Italian sounding name or Italian guy. Uh, so it was actually mentioning Pumping Iron. And there were. Uh, snippets from the film and the and the little article I read about it. Okay. Anyway, so who cares? Uh, so you're curious now. That's good. I'm I I I look forward to hear what you think. So what you take? I have out it of on that. my laptop here. It's yes. downloaded. I just need to watch it. Uh, so so I, I I look forward to hear what you think after you have watched it. Sounds good. I'll, I'll so I'll coming share back, my, my, coming back to the smartphones and uh, the smartphones the, and being sharp and getting my transition. Yes, <clears> yes, <throat> yes. So, go ahead with your transition, then, sir. <laughs> no, I think I'm, I've dug a hole for myself. I don't need to bury myself <laughs> some more. You know, like all right, I dug out of my hole and I'm putting the mud on top of me, right? And you're pressing on top. Yeah, thanks. You know, maybe oh, maybe you on. can carry on. We don't we don't want to we don't want to lose uh, listeners now. They they are biting their nails. In, uh, in in anticipation and want to learn what the transition leads towards. It's probably published <laughs> over there or down there where the motion will be. So they probably understood, right, where the motion is. Right? So we're, talking, we're going to talk about photography today. And whether <laughs> I'm going to title it The Secret Motion You Only Learn By motion. Listening no, to the Damn Thing. Just to contradict me. Right, just to contradict me. Nice, nice. Yes. Right. Today we're going to talk about photography. You raised an interesting point um, a few days ago about the right to publish photography uh, that was taken in public, basically, and whether you can do this uh, against the person's will. Yes. So the motion today is a street photographer. Those are the people taking candid portraits and pictures on the street. People, people, uh, you, uh, you go to you, you go far away by giving them the denomination of people and human beings. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, playing, they're another class. They're not even I, to be I considered. Try, I try to. How could, you, I, how could you do this against someone's will? I try to. They have to be inhuman. I try to quote the motion. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm already debating. <laughs> I'm so emotional today. You, you, you try to prime our listeners already, as you always do. That's like your no. one of your your tools in your your psychological warfare toolkit. Anyway, um, so the motion is: you tell our listeners then. Yeah. Our motion today is: a street photographer has the right to publish your picture, even against your will. I will be against that motion. Yes. Because that's um, all that matters. I am not telling you anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, logically, cool. you're in favor of that motion, which I understand. But we'll talk about this afterwards. It's not necessarily your preference. It was not my preference. But let's see how our arguments hold up. And right. uh, yeah, we come back to this after our pieces, of course. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first. And argues for the motion. Street photographers. Those are people, and I called them people before, let's call them artists instead, walking the street and taking candid portraits of strangers or candid pictures of scenes that they see and encounter most of the time in cities, but not necessarily only in cities. Often these pictures are not about the people per se. So there are a lot of street photographers that capture scenes where people happen to be an artistic element, but often it's also an element of portraiture. So they, they try to capture expressions. A very famous uh, street photographer called it the decisive moment. So they try to capture that moment where something happens that is unique, that is special. Also, street photographers see themselves as people capturing the zeitgeist. They document, they, it's a very documentary style of photography, um, even though there are branches that are more artistic than others. But in general, street photographers document life on the street. And as such, they span the whole range of human emotions, the whole range of things that can happen. Now, I mentioned a few times, street photography is an art form. Street photographers are artists. And in most cities around the globe, in most countries and cultures around the globe, art is a very highly regarded form of expression and a protected form of expression. Therefore, as an artist, you should not be constricted as to what you represent with your art. And even if you take a picture of people on the street that, by the way, in most cities of this planet uh, agree to being recorded by millions of cameras all the time, then having that one picture that may come as part of a large artistic body um, is, of course, totally legitimate to be posted and published, even if you're not agreeing with being published as such. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his argument. I don't want to talk about the legal aspect. I want to talk about the moral attitude, and I want to show how this is actually a much wider problem it's a class struggle, a class between the rich and the poor. This is what we're going to talk about. But before I get to that, it's an important topic because we're experiencing an explosion in the number of devices that can record images and sounds. Those devices are increasingly small or capable of shooting at long distances, extremely long distances. And we can even talk about satellite photography, which is extremely uh, detailed. You may see where I'm getting at. If we don't impose limits, if anything limits to ourselves, there will be no room for privacy left. There's nothing to prevent me from, let's say, placing tiny cameras in this street in front of all the windows of the house where you live in and waiting for you to come out through the window or through the door without you even realizing your photo is taken. And that would not be called harassment in that case. Taking a photo of inside your house is forbidden in most jurisdictions, but the point here is to be careful to not open Pandora's box, eroding slowly all your rights for privacy. Otherwise, here's what's going to happen. Only those who can afford to walk or drive privately will do so. For instance, traveling in cars with tinted windows or only attending excluded, exclusive settings and venues where obviously no other paparazzi or street photographers, so-called street photographers, would roam around. It's, I would say it's very similar. I'll, take, I'll give an analogy here. For, for, with poor people, 
being sometimes this is psychological uh, analysis that has been done. Poor people being against taxes on the wealthy, even though they would benefit from it, from, from these taxes. And the psychological aspect here is that the uncertainty of what change would bring makes people risk of us. In this case, being okay to have your picture taken is the poor man's choice who doesn't realize the nefarious consequences. It will never affect the wealthy. And instead, it will be one more reason to justify mass surveillance, for instance, that will mostly affect the common people, the poor people, not the wealthy who can protect themselves and live in their, in their compound away from that mass surveillance. This is a class problem, and this is why street photography, or so-called um, artistry in this case, should not be done against your will. It's just opening Pandora's box. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. Wow. You're convoluting and mixing and matching a couple of things that really don't belong together. And you also clearly don't know what is allowed and not allowed these days. So let me help you. Let me educate you a little bit. The scenarios that you mentioned, oh, I can put out cameras all around your house um, and I can take uh, telephoto pictures and satellite images of you. Technically, you might. Legally, almost everywhere on this planet, this is not allowed. You're not even allowed to post a tripod somewhere and take a picture of a famous building these days. You have to han have a handheld camera and you have to be on public ground. And you have to demonstrate that what you're doing is out of an artistic motivation or you have to keep the pictures to yourself. That's basically the distinction that is being made pretty much everywhere where legislation around this exists. So the thing, the scenarios that you paint, they there are two things that I find ironic about it. First off, we live in a surveillance uh, society. No one asks us about it. No one cares if we agree or not. And the party surveying us is not the street photographers, by the way. It's the governments, it's the companies, it's the the advertisement businesses. It's, it's all of the above, but not the street uh, photographer. The street photographer deliberately frames and takes pictures of strangers and documents live on the street. Now, you cannot document live on the street if beforehand you check in with people if they are agreeing you to take the picture and also you cannot avoid taking pictures uh, or being uh, your picture being taken even if you want to a couple of weeks ago we had a debate over the selfies at places like Auschwitz and your argument was that this is an expression of the youth that they can use their phone to communicate yeah if they take a selfie and you are walking through the frame in the back then you've been in part of that picture as well and Technically, you could say, depending on who, with the intention that uh, this picture was taken with, it may even qualify as street photography. And then what? They are not allowed to post it anymore? Is that what you're saying? I doubt that this is what you really want to enforce because it's also not useful. It's not about the, the poor and the rich. It's not about those who are protected or not protected. Actually, um, street photography is often about protecting something it's about protecting moments that are fleeing it's pr about protecting street art it's about documenting often documenting beauty in 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 the daily it's for future generations probably also interesting to see how we used to live in street photography you see documented shifts of behavior of people in cities and i, re I repeat what i said earlier The moment you step out of your door and you walk into the public, you actually agree of being to being seen and also to be recorded. Why not also be part of a picture every once in a while? Especially since in most countries, um, exposing you in an in an hurtful way is prohibited anyway. So you're protected from that, and everything else is just an expression of an art form. <laughs> And now on to Sebastian. I'd like to start with what you ended your three minutes with. You mentioned if you step out of your house, you basically agreed to be to have a photo taken of you. I don't think so. When you step out of your house, you want to go somewhere. You don't necessarily agree to have your picture taken. Uh, it's an uh, implicit permission that you give or a lack of permission, which is not required in this case for street photography. And I do want to insist this is a class problem because if you're rich, you're probably going to live in a compound which has security you know, at the gate of your compound, which means nobody can wait in front of your house and snap a picture of you. Whereas you, if you're less wealthy, you don't have that advantage. So I do think there are a difference of treatment 
of how this right is expressed today. And that's why I don't want to step into the uh, legal aspect. For instance, when I mentioned nothing prevents me from putting tiny cameras, which are invisible to, uh, to, this, to your site around your house, I'm not taking photos of the inside, which is indeed not, not allowed. But as soon as you step out, and I could call this art, you know, Duck stepping out of his house every day and the different expressions that he has on his face every day. And I do a collage, and I find this very interesting. This, you know, the daily life of a German citizen. Why not? You have points, indeed, not legal points. You have absolutely uh, entitled to bring these points, but that, that's not my what I'm trying to bring here. My point is that, that if you, you, you people will find workarounds, right, to not respect the law. And I'm trying trying to show the consequences of not thinking holistically about the problem and the and the die consequences uh, of that. And I want to emphasize one aspect um, on 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 what I mean by that. Just afterwards, I want to come back to an earlier point that you had around artistry. And this is about uh, creating uh, an element of portraiture and um, and creating different scenes and having a candid expression of people's emotions and faces. It's not incompatible with not publishing it. Nothing prevents you from taking the picture. The problem is about publishing it and getting people to recognize their own faces. Uh, you can keep it to yourself, as you mentioned to, my, to me, actually, in your, in your three minutes. Yeah, you can keep it to yourself. Not a problem. What we're debating here is publishing this and making it available for others among other things, to governments. How? I'll give an example. We may or may not be there quite yet, but this is the Pandora's box I'm describing. Once you have these photos online, they come with a GPS, right? There's a GPS positioning because your smartphone or your digital camera has a GPS. With things like machine learning and artificial intelligence and facial recognition, it will be very easy to say, I want to find all the photos of Sebastian online, and I'll find some Instagram posts or whatever. Now, if I do this, fine. I do this as an amateur. I'm curious where I was pictured and taken a photo of. If it's the police, do I really want to have the police or someone else figure out I was actually there at that time? Maybe not. Now, this is not happening today. It's happening tomorrow, guaranteed, whether we like it or not. So if we don't realize that the right that we had in the past was applicable in a certain era of a lack of devices being everywhere, then we're failing to grasp the risks of this. There's a class struggle which I kept emphasizing, but there's also this mass surveillance issue, which is affecting everyone. I don't think any one of us, if we really think about it, want to be able to have other people find out where we were, with whom we were, and, and basically paint an entire picture of who we are, our psycho psycho psychological traits, exactly the same debate we had about, or the debate that existed around metadata. You don't need to know the content of your conversation to know what your, your lifestyle is about, whether to know I'm gay or heterosexual, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the drastic consequences of not limiting this publication right that exists today in most jurisdictions. Final statements. Dirk goes first. You make it sound like there are hundreds and thousands of street photographers swarming the city, taking your picture and posting it to Instagram. Unless you want to forbid all of social media, um, first off, po uh, posting pictures that people have taken, it's not going to go away. Secondly, it's not hundreds of thousands of people that I'm talking about. It's not the ever-present surveillance co uh, community that I'm talking about. I'm talking about people with sometimes fancy and specialized cameras taking deliberate pieces of art. Now, Germany has a history of being critical about this. So that is why our street artists usually try to take pictures where you don't see faces. If you see German street photography often the faces are disguised for that very reason but there has been a a lawsuit filed recently and there has been um our highest court actually decided that it is okay to have an exhibition with pictures taken on the street if you can make it believable and make a good cause that this is an artistic expression and it needs to be more than just your Instagram feed. It needs to be something substantial, like a photo book, like an exhibition, like a larger body of work that others recognize as art. And this is where the line is really drawn. Is it art? Is it uh, Then it can be published. If it's not, then the right on your to decide what happens to your own picture is the higher right to be defended. And this is where I end. So yes, it is okay. Sebastian. Most of us will not be able to escape the snapping of photos taken of us. We need to think carefully what that means. 
there are not hundreds of thousands of street photographers. There's millions, hundreds of millions of them because anyone who takes a photo with a smartphone is technically a street photographer. Anyone can call themselves an artist. There is no jurisdiction or entity which says you're an artist or not. If you write, you're a writer. If you take a photo, you're a photographer. Full stop. You may be a shit photographer, but that's beyond the point. I don't have a problem you taking photos of food, but my what I'm prob- what I'm highlighting here is that we we're living in a different era and we're entering an era right now which is changing fundamentally our approach to this portrait photography. I have no problem for you to publish my photo of me if you ask my permission, right? We're talking about the aspect specific aspect. I want us to to close up on this where you are publishing something, a, a photo of my face or whether small or big, and you're not asking for my permission just because I walked out in the street. And as I highlighted in my three minutes, the risk is it was going to be, it's com- it's coming, it's obvious, it's coming tomorrow, like next year or at, at the most, in two years' time, where you'll be able to search for your photo and find every instances of your face on the internet. I can guarantee you that a lot of us will be horrified. <laughs> So that, that was it. That was today's debate. And now I'm curious, Sebastian, was this your real stance before we started the debate or... I forgot to say one thing. Oh. I forgot to say one thing. I forgot to say that I love taking photos. I love taking portraits. Actually, I'm more of a portrait person than landscape photographer. And yeah, I'm shy also. I don't dare ask for permission. So this really fucking bothers me. To be yeah. to be to be clear, I don't want to ask ask for permission, and then what people are going to say no, and they're taking a great portrait. Fuck it. But I realize again this this debate thing uh, with you. It's always it's annoying every time it makes me think and realize that whatever I hold for true before, I have to question everything I think. I hate you. <laughs> I mean, the interesting <laughs> thing is, I I had the same. I I suggested this motion, and I came from a different story actually, and we didn't really touch in depth on what my my trigger was so i i saw a picture on instagram um, a street photographer had taken that in in new york and there was a lady shown that clearly has seen that her picture was taken and she gave uh, the photographer the finger so she the, what? Cle- the finger <laughs> um, so she she clearly she showed her disapproval that's what i took out of that gesture and he proudly posted that on instagram saying hey he loved that expression and when you research you find a whole a whole subculture of photographers taking pictures just like this and proudly posting it and that there is a cultural element as well right so in in the us it may be even a little bit more extreme than in europe that you feel like hey that it's within their rights to post this and i i pinged the guy and i said listen It feels to me like this lady didn't want to have her picture taken in the first place. Now, you may even dis- decide that you keep that picture. It may even be part of an exhibition or whatnot. It may be part of an uh, of an artistic body. And you may argue this is this is maybe then, then okay-ish. But I, I don't think it's a stretch to assume when she doesn't want to have her picture taken, she certainly doesn't, doesn't agree you posting that on Instagram for the likes. And that is that is what was my trigger for this debate, and and so for me it's I do think, and that was what I argued about. I do think it is okay morally, ethically, and legally for photographers to take pictures of strangers in the street. It is also okay to um, to be a dick about it, <laughs> and it's also okay to to publish it to some degree. I don't think that they pose the larger threat to humanity than the ever presence of social uh, social media and and smartphones in the first place so i tend to agree with you on that but this is not the same thing but i do what i'm getting worked up over is somebody expressed their their dislike and being ignored at that and this was kind of the the thing that triggered me where i feel like if if i if i find my picture somewhere online and i tell that person depublish it I I kind of expect that to happen. 
And if I if I if a photographer walks up to me and I I have my se- a, a task with myself, I actually do wanna wanna take more portraits in the street and ask people at least afterwards and um, kind of maybe capturing the candid moment, but then walking up to them and saying, "Hey, listen, I took the picture of you. If you want it, here's my card or something like that." And if they demand of me to delete it or they don't agree to have a picture taken, then I wouldn't take it or delete it. It's like. My, as I said, don't be a dick about it. That's kind of the, the ethos I would follow. And this is what, what kind of got me spinning in circles. Because I feel like, yeah, it's maybe within the rights, but it should be there should be a, a moral feeling, a moral code against just posting it for the likes, if that makes sense. That was a lot of talking. What do you, um, Did I get across what I was thinking? Yep. And I want to react on three things. I would not delete it if I'm asked to delete it, but I would not publish it if I'm asked not to publish it. Yeah, uh, maybe that. It's my right to keep my you know, my snap, my photo, uh, but it's another thing to publish it or not. I th- the reason why I did not bring up the example that you had with that woman uh, giving the finger, first of all, is because you did not bring it up either. And I didn't want to go into the rabbit hole of uh, humiliating pictures. I wanted to have our debate, and I think that's what we did, to make it broader uh, in terms of, you know, even if you're like staying in the street, should that be acceptable? Uh, because in the case of humiliating photos, I think there are there are laws, and that's why I also avoided the legal debate. Where if you're taking a, depending on the country, if you're taking the photo is taken of you in a in a degrading fashion or taken out of context, you can you actually do have a right uh, on this. So I think it's a subset, and that's why I think it was more interesting to debate on the on the broader n- notion. There's one thing I just realized. I, actually, the the whole mass surveillance thing got me worked up as we were talking. I actually did not think through the whole thing. Uh, I prepared it, but I didn't realize actually it could actually it, it could lead to even more to what I said. You can make predictions. If I know your habits, I know what you're going to do next. But if I have a sense of where you're at, where you shop, where you live, I can predict with fairly high accuracy because people do the mo- the same things out of habit most of the time. It's very difficult to have a different routine every single day or every single month, right? And I think that's a bit scary. And the thing is, it's not because you have a bad intention as a single individual street photographer. It's the use of this by, by the, the algorithms that you can build on top of it mm-hmm. because we live in this internet era. And you cannot just think, oh, but my responsibility is just my own self. No. Well, we're a collective society. Yeah, it has consequences. I right? don't think that you're just a cog in a machine. You're still a cog and you're still making that machine work. And I just realized it has way more dire consequences than I even thought of before preparing the debate. But and that, 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 and that bothers me. It bothers me from an art perspective, but it bothers me even more from a society perspective. But here's the thing: you you kept bringing that up, and what kind of what, what kind of what I find weird about it is, you can tomorrow decide to criminalize street photography and criminalize private cameras for that matter, and may, and and uh, and you still don't solve for what you just point to. This no, is no, not I'm a not street photography problem. It's a, it's it's a not, massive not violence problem. I'm, 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 I'm bringing up. That's why I didn't want to enter the the legal aspect. I'm not suggesting to ban them. I, I'm suggesting to think twice about it. But it, yeah, as but an individual photographer, my, my point, my point being is, what you what you point out is a problem, and I I agree with you. I feel the same way. That's not about three photography. That's about being ever present with uh, tracking devices. Be it pictures or not, taking but pictures. You can control in your own self. You can control your own data, but you cannot control what others are doing with photos of you. Yeah, and that's why I'm, but this I, is I, the debate. But I think uh, street photography is the it's like the the fraction of the fraction of the fraction of a percent of the problem that you're just pointing to. But it's the fashion that you don't control. You can control the rest. You can delete your Google Photos or Facebook account. You can delete all your tracking devices. You can do that whenever. You can never control what the other person no. is doing. If you if you walk, you know, I noticed I noticed a trend when I'm in the US. And uh, a couple of years ago, there were always signs that said this place is video surveillance. Um, since my last trip, those signs seem to change. There's it, it it says it's video and audio surveilled. I cannot control any of this. I walk into a, a random shop, a random street in, in the US and in Germany probably as well, or in Switzerland for that matter, and I'm video and audio surveilled. And don't tell me I can control this. I do think the street photographers are the friendliest and the least threatening element of being being out in, in the street. I don't I disagree. Just for the sake of debating and just for the sake not just for the sake of arguing, but I disagree because the surveillance is for now. 
maybe not in China, but for now is visible. You know where you're being monitored. You can see these cameras and you think, oh, these are, my point is, hang on, hang on. I'm not saying they're good. I'm saying they're, they're equally as bad, but the street photography, it's hundreds of millions. There's billions of people everywhere constantly recording hundreds of millions of photos and videos in higher quality than probably the CCTV cameras, which are in a fixed point. My point is this, this is the invisible surveillance that we don't talk about because we, because we all do this, because we all love it. Oh, we take a photo of this and you don't realize, oh, but Duck is in a tiny, tiny spot of that picture and you had no idea on that picture. But then it will be, a, it will be possible when facial recognition accuracy uh, increases to be able to tell, hey, I know what you've been doing, what you've been up to. I, it's, guaranteed, it's guaranteed we're going to get there. And what I'm trying to bring up in this debate is a sense of responsibility in each of us in each of us as citizens of a global planet, of a society, right? We may not control or we may have different reasons why we want to have CCTV in a shopping mall, right? Or for whatever, uh, sensitive buildings. But what we do with our cameras, with or without the permission of others, is something we can we can more immediately control rather than voting at elections or passing a law or not. I'm getting more and more convinced by what I'm saying. <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> and by the way, I do think, and that's, that's maybe to close with, I do think the element that you stress we actually agree on it's slightly slightly besides the the core of the debate but uh, hey who cares it's an extension of the debate and um i like to to conclude with maybe um if you feel dear listener that you are a street photographer just don't be a dick about it so if you if you sna uh, ca capture a good a good shot be proud of it show it maybe to your friends But don't show, be a show off online. That's what I take out of this. I try to only publish pictures of people that gave me the permission to publish it. Uh, maybe, as you said, maybe uh, every once in a while it might be that we publish something where we didn't realize somebody was in the spot. And indeed, uh, most of the time, if you take a, a picture at a tourist destination or with a lots of people in the spot, maybe there are others uh, being photographed as well. There are gray areas. But I, I do feel like uh, even if you're within your rights, we don't always have to act on our rights. Sometimes the responsible and friendly thing to do is um, to not insist on our rights. I'll close off on one thing. If any of our listeners wants to have a secret, non-published photo of Dirk, I have, I have the stash. <laughs> That's it. No further comment. <laughs> Yeah, and I explicitly do not give you permission to publish it. Unless, I can't hear. I can't hear. Hang unless, on, hang on. Unless I'm it's a piece tunnel. of art and you, you want to do tunnel. an exhibition. <laughs> yep. You're going through a tunnel. Yep. All right. So, <laughs> dear listeners, as always, we are eager to uh, hear from you, read from you, or uh, at the very least see uh, what site may have had, in your opinion, the better arguments. So head over to our webpage at 2debate.eu and click thumbs up if you say a street photographer has the right to publish your picture, even against your will, my site that was, um, or the thumbs down button if you, if you say S Sebastian was right. Uh, it's a slippery slope. Today you're gonna be photographed by an artist. Tomorrow you're gonna be jailed for just uh, spitting a chewing gum on the ground and being photographed while doing it. Um, I think that's the case in Singapore already. They kind of got rid of that law, but anyway. <laughs> but it, yeah, maybe it is the case in Singapore already. Uh, whatever. If you say this is this is what Sebastian, uh, no. If you say Sebastian was right, the thumbs down button it is. If you say my arguments were better, I look forward to your click on the thumbs up button. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.